students, we have been discussing about ternary phase diagrams and I am uh, discussing the basics of the ternary phase diagrams. In the last class, I told you about ternary tri lines and ternary tri triangles. So, today we are going to discuss more on det uh, of the ternary tri lines, especially the details of the ternary tri lines, I will talk about it. And in addition to that, I am going to tell you also the different sections of the three dimensional ternary phase diagram which normally we uh, see. Well, uh, you know tire lines are what? In a binary phase diagrams, as I told you, tire line connects liquidus with the solidus curve basically. So, as I have shown in this plot, this is a binary phase diagram, you can see here that it is connecting the uh, tire line at T1, it is connecting the liquidus with the solidus. And so, in ternary, the concept remains same. So, if I suppose have a ternary tire lines, it can be also connecting two solid to solid curves also, there is nothing, nothing sacrosanct about that, it must be only connecting a liquidus and solidus. The two, uh, so the two uh, curves which connects one solid to other solid can also be a tire line. So, I am going to show you that first. Suppose you have a alloy composition given by point x and this alloy is then separated into two solid phases alpha and beta correct. So, if I connect these two these three points alpha and beta through x then I get a tie line and now I showed you in the last class how to use this tie line to measure the volume fraction of the phases alpha and beta just like in a binary system we can do that. Only thing we need to be careful about that we need to draw parallel lines with respect to with respect to BC or SC here through x alpha and beta points. And then wherever these parallel lines will intersect the this line these sides of the triangle sides of the Gibbs triangle we can actually use those points to measure the volume fraction of phases as simple as applying lever rule. So, this is when you have two phases present in a microstructure. When you have three phases present in a microstructure then you need to use what is known as ternary tri triangles and concept is again similar but little bit different. So, suppose I have a alloy composition x which is sitting in the center of this triangle alpha beta gamma and this means that alloy composition x is separated or basically undergone a phase transformation which has lead to which has led to formation of alpha beta gamma phases just like a eutectic reaction L going to alpha plus beta plus gamma correct. Same thing so this alloy x has undergone such a kind of reaction where three phases has formed alpha beta gamma and whose compositions are given by these three points. So, this is what is known as ternary tie triangles. Now, to measure the volume fraction of phases for these we have used a unique strategy I told you we join the point x with gamma and extend these to the sides of alpha and beta the line joining alpha and beta points. So, this intersects at point y correct. So, now we can measure basically volume fraction of gamma and volume fraction of the fictitious phase y using this as a tri line y x and gamma. So, once you do that we will come to know volume fraction of gamma and volume fraction of the y. So, volume fraction of gamma is nothing but x y divided by the line gamma y on the other volume fraction of y is given by x gamma divided by the line y gamma is very simple because these are parallel lines respect to the a b. So, that is for that is straightforward. So, then this fictitious phase y why you what we have measured now is then getting separated into two phases alpha and beta and we can then calculate the volume fraction of alpha beta by knowing the composition of alpha uh, y and beta that is what I told you. Now, in this lecture we are going to tell you what are the rules and regulations for the tie lines. I think before that let me just you know uh, try to discuss you something about what is the real phase diagram means that is what we I started. Let us consider first the ternary isomorphic system ok and we will have extensive discussion on these for the next several lectures. So, uh, we have a system like A B C three components and in which I have shown this Gibbs triangle A B C also I have shown you the vertical lines coming out from these three points B A and C. 
in such a way that for the system AB, system BC or system AC, there are three binary systems, they all having isomorphic first phase diagrams. So, so that means A and B also forms isomorphic first phase diagram, A and C forms isomorphic first, B and C also forms isomorphic first phase diagram. So, uh, basically if that is the case, then the ternary phase diagram will also be isomorphic first type. The way the ternary phase diagram will look like is like this, basically it is again looking like a con shell okay, like this with two surfaces that is shown, two surfaces are forming the phase diagram. Instead of two lines or two curves in a binary, we have two surfaces. The top surface is known as liquidus, bottom surface is known as solidus. So, this is a top surface, you see here top surface is like this, I am only drawing the top surface for you. So, this is a top surface, okay. this is a liquidus, okay. one can actually mark it, this is the liquidus and bottom one is a solidus. So, there are two surfaces, inside that we have liquid plus solid above the liquidus you have liquid, above the solidus you have solid and in between that you have solid plus liquid. Again the same analogy can be brought from this binary system A and B. Okay. This is exactly that. So, what we have done because it is a three dimensional plot in internal system we have to use the concept called surface. So, there are two surfaces correct and now on the right side I am showing you the liquidus surface profile okay. that is how the liquidus surfaces look like. Uh, here actually C has the highest melting temperature, B has the medium or intermediate and A has the lowest melting temperature. So, that is why the whole thing is looking like is going down towards A in this in this diagram you see here whole thing is looking like that is going down the A. It is not like that, it is a surface basically which connects the three uh, melting points A, B, C and this is T, C, this is T, B and this is T, A correct that is how it looks like. Similarly, solid surface will be also be looking same. Basically, the way you are seeing a solid surface is just like a curved surface going out of A and moving towards B and C correct. Now, you join these two together you get a three dimensional phase diagram very very clear very very clear. So, if you are not able to see it properly if you are not able to see it properly or see it means you are not able to think in terms of three dimensional diagram just close your eyes try to think about it. It is basically like a con shell take a con shell the two surfaces or basically you can take a uh, you know instead of a con shell you can take a uh, this cells available in the C surface okay, they look like a elliptical surface, but they are bounded by two planes. So, that is exactly the same thing as a ternary isophosphate diagram. Now, you know as you have uh, as you have rightly thought about it. Okay. So, if you want to discuss this is very easy to conceive very easy to interpret it, but the phase diagram can be very complex also and it can be consisting of more than 3 pages as you have seen 4 pages equally as possible in a ternary system. So, in those cases the diagrams will have diff complex shapes and in many times it is very difficult to conceive uh, very very difficult to conceive the, uh, the, the shapes of these diagrams in 3 dimensional projection 3 dimensional actually section or 3D model this is actually 3D model right. So, therefore, it is always important that we make easier things. So, one of the easiest thing is to use projections. Okay. So, the here again I am showing you this diagram, this plot is very very nice. You can see even how these two surfaces looking like. You can see inside that you have liquid plus alpha, liquid and alpha, three pages are present. So, as I said, we need to use the sections, correct. So, what are all different sections we can use? we can use sections first thing we can use is a isomorphous section. Okay. What is isomorphous section? Well, as it is says isomorphous sorry I sorry isothermal section not isomorphous. Isothermal means 
sections are taken at a fixed air pressure. So, as this diagram spans at from the maximum temperature of T c to minimum temperature of T b T a T c to T a as we see here. So, therefore, I can take ternary, uh, the isothermal, isothermal sections at different temperatures to show you that what the how does it look like this I am showing you two pictures here. Let us suppose I want to take a isothermal section at a temperature T 1. So, what I do I draw a triangle I simply draw a triangle at a temperature T 1 and then wherever this triangle cuts these two surfaces that becomes my isothermal section correct. So, as you see clearly here the triangle which is shown by red color is cutting the solidus and the liquidus surfaces. So, it is called cuts the liquidus surfaces at these two points 1 and 2 it cuts the solidus surface at this point 3 and 4 correct. I hope because this is, this is why the visualization is very important in binary system you do not need to visualize much because they are all two dimensional sections all together, but here you need to visualize very very uh, you know nice way or uh, very very carefully uh, I would say. So, as you see at uh, this section which is a parallel to this A B C triangle or Gibbs triangle taken at a temperature equal to T, T equal to T 1 that is what is the temperature. So, I have drawn a triangle at temperature T 1 which is parallel to this isothermal section uh, parallel to this you know Gibbs triangle that is why it is, is a tri we have we have taken a triangle ok. Now, this triangle as I said has cut the cut the uh, surfaces into four points obviously, but it can also cut only two points it depends on how do you draw the triangles or where you take the section. So, if I if I then, then uh, uh, if I then do that if I then project this whole thing ok what I will get I will get these one and two points you see one and two ok and three and four. So, this is what is shown here and you see this is C, this is B, this is A, A is the lowest melting temperature, C is the highest melting temperature and so because this is a section at T 1 and I know that A has the lowest melting temperature. So, therefore, the line the this this will basically this is a this is what this is separating three phase phases or three sections uh, of the phases nicely. As you see here this is a liquid this is per liquid plus solid this is solid. I always marking S equal to alpha solid equal to alpha because we always mark or use uh, you know alpha as the uh, Greek letter for the solid phase. So, what I mean to say is that this is exactly same as a binary system liquid solid liquid plus solid A P same exactly same thing here you see here this is the liquidus surface projection ok the solid surface projection this is a liquid liquid plus solid and solid. So, now if I draw any line any line which connects liquid to solid this is the liquidus surface projection the solid surface projection right you have taken at a temperature T 1. So, uh, uh, basically because these points are actually this you can see here you can project it here you can project it there you can project it there you can project it there that is what you get that is what you get this is exactly same thing on the triangle. So, I if I connect these two curves now not surfaces anymore because we are projecting on bottom to the bottom surface to the Gibbs triangle they will become curves they no longer become a surface because it is a two dimensional section. So, if I draw a line like this it connects liquid to solid that is a tie line and this tie line is same as binary tie line. I can use this tie line to measure volume fraction suppose this is my fulcrum this is L 1 this is S 1. So, liquid is volume fraction is X S 1 by L 1 S 1 exactly same the moment you know the compositions of X L L 1 S 1 I can calculate the following fraction of phases very easily. So, these are the tie lines we draw. Now, one can actually draw many sections ok. Suppose, here actually I am drawing a section at T 2 and you see T 2 this is shown by a green green triangle 
okay, how it will look like again here connections are shown, but not may not visible, but this is what it will look like. As simple A is lowest melting temperature, so liquid will be last liquid solid if I will have A rich. So that is why you see this is S1, S2, this is L1, L2, okay. this is L1, L2, S1, S1, S2, sorry. Oops. Anyway. So this is these are the two surfaces. Again, these lines which I am joining are tri lines. Okay. So one can actually uh, do such a kind of things. Okay, we'll go back to this letter. Such a kind of things, such a kind of projections one can take and do the analysis. So now, as you have seen, this is the tie line. So obviously, the tie lines will follow certain rules and regulations, uh, and we seem to discuss about that. I'll discuss probably only uh, there are four or five rules which one needs to know to understand these, uh, these how to draw tire lines in a tunnel section. So, I am going to discuss two rules for this lecture and next lecture I will discuss another two or three rules. So, the first rule says that the first rule or most important rule is that if a two phase region, two phase region stretches from one binary to the second binary, I will explain each and every point to you. If a two phase region stretches from one binary to other binary, tie line will gradually change from one binary to the other binary. Okay. That is what is the rule. So, what does it mean? In this case, suppose I have drawn, in this case I have drawn. So, tie line actually extend or stretches from one binary to the other binary. So, tie line stretches from one binary BC to other binary AC. That is what you can see. It is stretching from one binary to other binary. Now, it says that is the case, then tie line, the binary tie line is this one, which is on the binary. Similarly, this is also binary tie line, correct. So, as these are the two binary tie lines, so what is the, what is the aspect, as these are the two binary tie lines, it says that the tie line will change gradually from one binary to the other binary. So, that means that let me just go to the board and explain you that is easier. So, that means that I will try to draw the same thing. Yeah. The last point is A, yes, it is A, C, D. So, liquid, solid. And this is a liquid plus solid. So, this is the binary tie line. It says that binary tie lines will keep on rotate or keep on gradually change. That is what will happen. So, the change of the binary tie line orientation will be gradual from one binary end to the other binary end. That is what is the rule says, because these two are the binary tie lines and inside these are actually ternary tie lines. So, if I take one simple tire line L1, S1 inside, so this one is keep on changing the rotation to match one end, one binary BC, other end another binary AC. That is what the rule 1 says, this is the rule 1. So, rule 2 is much easier. Rule 2 says in general, in general binary tie lines if extend will meet in general a binary tie line extends if I extend this binary tie line, it will meet the corner, it will meet the corner. See, this is the binary tie line or let me just draw it. So, this is my binary tie line, this is my binary tie line. 
if I extend them they are all going to meet the corner C, but that is not the case for ternary, none of these ternary tile lines are going to meet. the corner. So, it is only the binary tie lines which can meet the corner if we extend none of the ternary tie lines will extend and never meet any corners you see here it is meeting somewhere else not at the corners. This rule has an exception, exception is that when this phase solid has a very low solid solubility of the component C, then this can meet at point C. Basically what does it tell? This is a tire line, so these points if it extends and meets that will that will be solid solubility of the solid for the component C. Now only in case the component C has virtually no solid solubility in solid phase alpha then only this ternary tire line can meet the corners that is now exceptional case, exception is not the rule. So, rule is that when one binary tire line extended it can meet the corner or when the another binary tire line extends to meet the corner, but none of the ternary tire lines extended will meet the corners of the Gibbs triangle that is what the rule 2 says. So, again I will before I end this lecture I will like to reiterate that tile lines connects liquid and solid surfaces which are taken at a particular temperature T1, T2 or T3 or T4 depending on whatever temperature you are and they connect because they connect to is liquid as liquid L1 L2 surface sorry it is a curve which is projection of the surface from the 3 dimensional model also it connects this one and with the solid projection because of that it tells you that they are actually looking like a binary tie lines. We can use them like a binary tie line if I have a composition x I can actually calculate volume fraction of the liquid volume fraction of solid at the particular temperature for this uh, using this tie line. Similarly actually, actually I can actually see that there are two rules the first two there are five rules actually I am only discussing two rules here first rule says that the tie line will continuously change its orientation from one a one binary to the other binary. Second rule says is that only the binary tie lines extended will meet the corner ternary tie lines will never meet the corner except when the solid has low solubility in component C or component A or component B depending on which you are drawing okay, in this case it is component C. That is that is why then this ternary tire lines will meet the corners. So the other two rules, uh, other three rules, other I'll try to discuss you in the next class, and subsequently I'll also tell tell you the uh, tell you the uh, particle sections and other sections. I'll not particle section. I'm going to discuss you the uh, you know projections of liquids and solid surfaces.